this lesson, we're going to be dividing polynomials. In a previous lesson, we had already been dividing polynomials by monomials. So this lesson is specifically going to get in the cases of where we're dividing them by binomials and trinomials. So let's get started. First, we're going to start with a monomial divided by a binomial. So I'm going to show kind of two different approaches for how you can think about this. And we'll start very basic. 3x over the binomial 9x plus 6. First approach, we look at any places where we can factor. So the numerator can't be factored any further. It is simply 3x. The denominator, they have a, a greatest common factor of 3. 3 times we'd have 3x plus 2. OK, what did this do for us? This gave us multiplication here and multiplication here. So because we've got factors that are multiplied, we can cancel them out from the top and the bottom. You can't cancel them out when they're added or subtracted. I know students, ugh, makes me cringe. They, they look at this and they're like, oh, I'll cancel the x's, I'll make that one, I'll make that three. Ah, no, don't do it, please. Uh, quickly erase it before anyone else can see it. All right, you can only cancel basically when you've got multiplication here. And I know there's a plus sign here, but it's like trapped inside of those parentheses. So now we've got multiplication. Now we can cancel out those threes, and that would leave us with x over 3x plus 2. Great. And I like that way probably the best because of the clear understanding of what we're doing. The other way that you can realistically think about this is, since we pulled a factor of 3 out of both terms in the bottom, and then later we pulled it out of the numerator, we really needed to make sure that there was a common factor in all terms in the expression. So this expression had one, two, three terms. So any factor that is goes into all three of them can be pulled out. So you can see, okay, 3x, 9x, and 6, what's the greatest common factor of all those? 3. So I'm going to divide them out and get x times 3x plus 2. Okay, let's look at another example. Oh, numbers got a little bit bigger. Okay, so first I'm going to do it by the, I'm not really going to continue to do it by the factoring method because that's the way I prefer as far as uh, uh, clearness and understanding. All right, so numerator is a mon monomial, so there's no factoring to do there. We'll leave that as 24x to the eighth. Denominator, uh, look at the coefficients, and they both have a factor of 3, and look at the variables, and they both have at least x squared. So that leaves us with 5x plus 6. Great. So if we look at the pieces that are multiplied here, we've got a 3x squared and a 24x to the eighth. So x squared can turn that x to the eighth into the sixth, and 3 goes into 24 eight times. So 8x to the sixth over 5x plus 6. And that's our simplified expression. OK, let's look at another one. So we've got 18x squared monomial over 14x to the seventh minus 5x. All right, numerator is a monomial, so we're going to leave that there. Denominator, nothing with the coefficients will factor out, but we can pull out an x. And then we're left with 14x to the 6th minus 5. OK, so uh, we can pull out, we can cancel out one factor of x and one factor of x in the numerator. So 18x over 14x to the 6th minus, minus 5. Wonderful. OK, now, so all three of these equivalent expressions are equivalent to the original, except in a few instances. And these instances are what we call the excluded values. Excluded values are the value that makes the, in our case, the denominator equal to 0. In other uh, uh, functions and uh, algebraic expressions, there might be other types of excluded values, but for dividing polynomials, we're really going to be looking at things that make the denominator equal to zero. So if I go back and I look at uh, the original expression, the original expression had 9x plus 6 in its denominator. So what value would make that denominator zero? Well, let's just set it equal to zero and we can find it. So subtract 6, subtract 6, 9x equals negative 6, divide by 9, divide by 9. Negative 6 over 9, that reduces to negative 2 thirds. So x cannot be equal to negative 2 thirds. These two expressions are equivalent except for x equals negative 2 thirds. And you might even say that, yes, they're both undefined at negative, uh, x equals negative 2 thirds, but uh, that's really uh, a point of, you know, lack of clarity. So, and some of the expressions will be absolutely different when we, we look at that. So that's an excluded value.
So that first example was pretty nice. When we look at the next example, 15x cubed plus 18x squared, ooh, I don't necessarily want to uh, set that equal to, to zero and try to solve that right as it is. So what we're gonna need to talk about is something called the zero product property. And the zero product property says that if a times b is equal to zero, that either a or b or both a and b are zero. So how does that help us? So let's go back to our second example here. Let me change into red. I'm gonna take the denominator not in its original form, I'm gonna take it in its factored form. So that was 3x squared times 5x plus 6. Okay, so the zero product property says that when we have things multiplied together, <clears throat> the only way for them to equal zero is for one of those things to be zero. Well, that makes sense. You know, five times uh, zero is zero. Uh, zero times seven is zero. Um, so if I have two things and we multiply them and it's equal to zero, one of those things has to be zero. So this allows us to, instead of solving this long equation, to say, okay, wait, we can make this just three x squared equals zero. That's one factor is equal to zero. Or five x plus six is equal to zero. Those are two much simpler equations for us to solve. Uh, the first one, we divide by three, we get zero, take the square root, we still get zero. So x cannot be zero. The second one, we subtract six and divide by five, and we get x cannot equal negative six fifths. So um, in this instance, uh, negative six fifths would still cause division by zero in the simplified answer. So it's still a problem. But I could plug in zero, and if I plugged in zero into the simplified answer, I'd get zero in the numerator, and I'd get uh, six on the bottom, so I'd get zero as, a, as the value of that expression in the simplified expression. But in the original, if I plug in zero, I get division by zero, which is undefined. So that's a clear instance where a value in the simplified expression is very different from a value in the uh, original expression. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to a situation where we've got a binomial divided by a binomial. The best thing to do to start off is to look at both numerator and denominator and see where can we factor. So with monomials in the previous examples, we couldn't factor that, but now we are looking to factor both numerator and denominator. So we look at 35x squared plus 20x. All right, so definitely a factor of five goes into both, and then a factor of x, and that leaves us with seven x plus four. And the denominator, Another factor of five comes out, that's nice, and that leaves us with three x plus one. Okay, so at this point, we wanna consider our excluded values. It's best to kinda of get them into this, this stage here, and we're really just focusing on the denominator. So the denominator here is five times three x plus one. Yes, there's two factors, but five cannot equal zero. So the only thing that could equal zero would be three x plus one. And three x plus one would equal zero at x equals negative one-third. So we cannot let x equal negative one-third. That's our excluded value. Um, let's go back and consider how we could simplify the rest of this expression. So they have a factor of five on numerator and denominator, so that will simplify. And so we're left with x times seven x plus four over three x plus one. Could you distribute that x uh, to the seven x plus four in the numerator? Sure, no need to though. Just stop right there. So kind of a two-part answer, the simplified expression and the excluded value that we can't let it be equal to. Okay, wonderful. Let's look at example eight here. All right, numerator, denominator, let's try to go ahead and factor out both, factor both of these. The numerator here, seven uh, x goes into both, leaving us with seven x minus five. And in the denominator, five uh, x goes into both, leaving us with x minus five. Great. All right, so this time, no uh, coefficients are canceling, but an x cancels. But before we do that, before we cancel that out, let's consider the excluded value. So either 5x is equal to zero, which means x cannot be equal to zero itself, or x minus five can't be equal to zero, which means x cannot equal five. So we have two excluded values. x cannot equal zero comma five. And I'm right, all right if you write them there with a comma there. All right, for simplifying our expression, we cancel out the x's, and we're left with seven times the quantity seven x minus five over the quantity five times x minus five. Great, there's the two parts of our answer. Now let's look at an example of a trinomial with a binomial. So 
I didn't specify which one is numerator and denominator. We'll look at both, where the numerator is a, a trinomial or where the denominator is a trinomial. So the first example here, x squared minus 14x plus 40. So now we have to employ some of our other factoring techniques other than just pulling out a greatest common factor. So for the numerator there, we're looking for numbers that multiply to positive 40, that add to negative 14. And so those numbers, uh, negative 10 and negative 4. So that's how the numerator factor, factors, and the denominator is x minus 4. Whoa, you're seeing something weird happening, and you're thinking, oh wait, can I cancel something? Yes, you can. I know you might have hung on to that thing about you can't cancel when there's addition or subtraction. Well, let me insert something that seems silly. I'm gonna pull out the greatest common factor of the denominator. Well, what is that? One. So I could make this one times x minus four. And once I do that, now I can see that I could cancel and x minus four, it is a whole factor, it's a binomial factor. And so, because it's a multipl multiplicative factor, we can cancel it. But before we totally move on and forget about that, we need to remember that the excluded value, so x minus four cannot be zero, so x cannot be equal to four. So that's our one excluded value. Once we cancel it, weird things happen. We actually don't even need to have a fraction anymore, we can just have x minus 10. And so the weird thing about x minus 10 is you can put any number you want in for x and you're gonna get um, a, a, a real number, but you still can't plug in four. You can't plug in four because in the original expression, if you plugged in four, you'd get a weird answer. So you can't plug in four here um, into the simplified expression, even though as it looks, it looks safe to do so. Okay, let's go ahead and try another example. This time we'll try one with a, uh, Binom, uh, binomial on top and a trinomial on the denominator. Okay, numerator we'll leave as x plus eight. Denominator, we're looking for numbers that multiply to 16 that add to 10. So that's x plus two and x plus eight. What a coincidence. We see an x plus eight on the top and the bottom. You should be kind of uh, looking and anticipating things like that to happen. So. Um, because the denominator has two binomials, we need to consider both of those because of the zero product property. X plus two can't equal zero, and which means X cannot equal negative two, and X uh, plus eight cannot equal zero, so X cannot equal negative eight. So two excluded values there. The X plus eight cancels. Wait a minute. What's left on top? Remember, we said that this is like x plus eight times one. You can't cancel out the entire numerator and leave nothing in the numerator. So what's gonna be left in the numerator is a one. In the denominator, we're left with x plus two. And the excluded values are x cannot be equal to negative two and negative eight. Wonderful. Um, be ready for other forms of factoring that might come up like a perfect square trinomial there in the numerator, or uh, a keen, uh, a uh, AC method uh, trinomial like um, number 16 in the numerator. So we get all kinds of different uh, factoring types that we might see. Okay, now let's go on to factoring a trinomial by a trinomial. That's like the most fun possible. So let's get started with number 19. All right, so you notice that both the numerator and the denominator um, have coefficients other than one. Now, the numerator is actually much worse than the denominator because the denominator, the first thing you should always be looking for is, can I factor out a GCF? So in the, de in the denominator, I can. So in the denominator, I can make this five times the quantity x squared plus 11x uh, plus 18. That makes the bottom much easier to factor. The numerator doesn't have that advantage. So I'm gonna take the numerator and work off to the side here for a second. I'm looking for factors of two times 63. So the nice thing about this is that the uh, coefficient of x squared is two, which is prime, but 63, that's nine times seven, or three times three times seven. So we're looking for a combination of those that's gonna add to 25. So we can certainly, we could start with two and 63, but we can see right away that's not gonna be 65. So let me try uh, six and 21. All right, so six and 21, that doesn't do it, that's 27 as our sum, so that's too high. So instead of that, let's try nine and 14. Nine and 14, that's 23, that's too low. Okay, so we have to find a number that's in between six and nine, so that's gotta be seven. So seven times 
18. 7 times 18, 7 and 18, ah, that adds to 25. So what does this mean for our numerator? The numerator, we're going to break it up as 2x squared plus 20, uh, sorry, 2x squared plus uh, 18x plus 7x plus 63. All right, we group the first terms. We group the last terms. Uh, we pull out a 2x from there, and we get x plus 9. And then we pull out a 7 here, and we get x plus 9. How nice. All right, so 2x plus 7 times x plus 9. All right, I'm going to throw that back up here. 2x plus 7 times x plus 9. That's how the numerator factored. We still have to factor the denominator a little bit more. So I'm going to rewrite this down. 2x plus 7 times x plus 9 all over 5 times. Okay, let's look at this. This is a trinomial with a equals 1, so we're looking for numbers that multiply to 18 that add to 11, so that's going to be x plus 2 and x plus 9. Wonderful. Okay, we're going to pause at this stage to look for any excluded values. Hopefully you're getting quicker at this and you realize that the excluded values would be x cannot be equal to negative 2 or negative 9. Now, when we go to cancel, we notice we have an x plus 9 on top and bottom, so those can cancel. So on the top, we have 2x plus 7. On the bottom, we have 5 times x plus 2. Wonderful. Let's just try one more. Let's go down to example 45 here, I think. Yeah. So that last one was a doozy because we had some really uh, hard factoring uh, situations in there. All right, so let's look at this one. Both of them are trinomials with a equals 1. So we're looking for numbers that multiply to c that add to b. And now we've just circled everything, and so what's the point of that? OK. So in the numerator, numbers that multiply to negative 40 that add to negative 6. So that's going to be p minus 10 and p plus 4. Great. Uh, in the denominator, numbers that multiply to negative 24 that add to negative 2. All right, that's going to be p minus 6 and p plus 4. Great. Pause. Think of your excluded values. So p cannot be equal to positive 6 and negative 4. Great. The p plus 4 is cancel. Great. We're left with p minus 10 over p minus 6. And then I see students just get so excited and they do this and it drives me crazy. You can't do that. Nope, nope, nope. Don't do that. Go back. One step too soon. Uh, one step uh, before. All right. These are now added, subtracted. There's no multiplication. So you're done. You can't cancel out those p's now. You are done. So that is how we can divide polynomials uh, when we have binomials and trinomials uh, throughout their numerator and denominator. Thanks all for watching. I uh, hope to see you guys again soon.